why most agents don't like prospecting is they've never really been taught how to do it. There's an exact science to this. You know, whether you call and they answer or you call and leave a voicemail. I mean, I've got voicemail down to a science on how to get people curious enough to want to call me back and hear what I have to say. So our competition, our direct competition, Redfin, Zillow, and all these other guys, Realtor.com, they're spending money here. But where we win is if we go into the niches, into the long tail, long tail keywords, right? So here, I wanted to show you that. Let me go back to this. Because as soon as the ad pops up, I click on it. What's up everyone? I'm Mark. I got Robert here, John and Gustavo. And today we're looking forward to uh, jumping into how to convert expired listings in a shifting market. What's up guys? How are you doing? Very Great well. Good here. afternoon. Awesome. Hey, awesome. hey, for everyone jumping in, please throw in the chat where you're listening from. We'd love to see you, uh, uh, where, where you're listening from. But uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump right on in. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mark. Appreciate that. So, uh, you know, for the folks that are here, uh, you know, you're here for a specific reason, right? So you're here because you want to learn uh, the whole process of converting expires, especially in this market, right? You want to learn, you want to gain some, uh, some insight, you want to know how to use an awesome tool like Red X, and you want to get in front of more motivated sellers. And that's really what's driving people. And, you know, I want to set the table for the discussion. Uh, we have some great people in here in the webinar. I want to set the table with this. Um, you know, and Robert, you can chime in uh, if, if this has changed at all. But this year, 2022, right, we're seeing a shift in the market. In case you haven't noticed it, right, there's a shift in the marketplace, right? We're seeing some movement. We're seeing inventory go up in a lot of these markets, especially out west. As you go from, from west to east in the country, that's how much the market is shifting. Way more out west. And it's kind of teeters off when you hit to the east coast. But even the super hot markets. South Florida, Miami area, even you know Charlotte, North Carolina, Tennessee, some of the hottest markets in the whole country, they're also seeing a shift, right? And they're seeing it right now in this stage, it's increased inventory, reduced pending listings, right? So if you look at the Las Vegas, Nevada, we have over 10 times more active listings than pending listings right now, okay? So just, just that is like mind blowing. Very different from six months ago, completely 180 from a year ago. That's what I'm talking about. But it changes. Every market's a little bit different. Boise, Idaho is probably in like four or five times active listings, depending listings. In Austin, Texas, one of the hottest markets in the last two years, four or five times active listings, depending listings. But you look at Miami, it's a little bit different there, right? One and a half, one and a half active listings for every pending listing. Charlotte, North Carolina, has been like one active to one pending for the longest time. It's kind of bucked the trend a little bit, but even in Charlotte, we're seeing inventory start to creep up. And a couple of things happen when inventory goes up, folks, right? You, you, you've got the buyers have more of a breather. The buyers have more of a chance to look at these homes. They're not rushing to close on it within the first hour because there's so many more buyers and sellers. There's more sellers out there. There's more balance in the marketplace. A lot of things change when you've got more inventory. And one of the biggest things that I've been tracking, thanks to our friends, Robert and our friends at Red X, I've been tracking this since the first quarter of this year. And, I, and it came up in my radar because of Red X and the data and the analysis that they do. Expired listings went up 30%, right? Robert, that's, not, that's right, right? About 30% in the first yeah, quarter. That's right. Um, yeah, we've seen it all year. And, and, you know, and it's pretty remarkable. And another date that I track really closely really closely is July 1st. July 1st is the second, you know, if January 1st is the Super Bowl of expires, July 1st is like the Oscars of it. Is that, is that a good deal? I don't know, I don't know. It's the second day, it's the second biggest day. For, second biggest. Yeah, the second biggest day for expires. And on July 1st, which I think is a bellwether for the rest of the year, they were up, Robert, don't let me lie here. I think it was 70% increase from a year before. That's right. Seven, zero, 70% increase year over year. 
What does that mean? And I think folks can interpret that a bunch of different ways. If you're in this webinar, the way I want you to interpret that is that it, it is an opportunity, okay? It is an opportunity because every market has opportunities. If when we were in a blazing hot, white hot seller's market, there's a lot of opportunity there as well. When we are in a shifting, more balanced market, one of the new opportunities that emerges, right, are expired listings, expired listings. So that's kind of a, a long-winded way to say expireds are becoming a bigger part of the marketplace. My, I don't have a crystal ball anymore. I threw it out after 2008. But my gut says, my gut says, we're going to see an upward trend of expired, especially after this really, really, really uh, uh, volatile summer months where the market shifted hard in a lot of these areas. You're going to see a lot of these sellers that are shell-shocked. They are not even sure what happened, right? They got hit by the tornado, the tsunami of the shifting market. And, and they're going to want an alternative. And a lot of those listings are going to expire. Some of them are going to be canceled. Some are going to be withdrawn. A lot of them are going to be expired. And you, if you want to navigate this shift more successfully, make your business more recession-proof, shift-proof, whatever you want to call it, adding expires into your toolbox is an excellent way to make your business more recession-proof. Because you're, the more legs your business has to stand on, the more you can weather the storm, folks. And that's a big thing, a big thing. I think for a lot of folks right now in August, things got real. It wasn't like one different month, one month that things shifted, two months. Now we're trying to get on to three or four months. We're like, okay, this is not a blip on the radar. This is a trend. Interest rates are almost at 6% for buyers. We have more inventory than we've had in the last 24 months. I think this is real. I don't think this is a blip on the radar. I think we're seeing a trend. And you're on this webinar because you want the tools to take advantage of that and ride that wave. Do not fear the shift. Do not fear the shift. Educate yourself, like on this webinar, adapt and thrive in the shift, folks. Okay? The people that want to hold on to the market that was here 12 months ago, they're going to have a tough fall and winter. It's going to be very difficult for them. The folks that adapt and roll with the punches and add new tools in their toolbox. You guys are well positioned to thrive in the ship. Okay, all right. All that to say, expires are interesting. But let's introduce uh, our special guest today, uh, John D. Smith, uh, who is a master at the expired game. Um, and don't let me get me started on, on Facebook. We're talking about expires today, right? So expired master, and he's been doing it not just for the last twenty years, but doing it in one of the hottest markets in the country, Charlotte, North Carolina. John, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? Great. Thank you, Gus. Glad to be here. So what's interesting, and I think that was a terrific uh, lead in there as far as the market itself, Gus. I'm originally from uh, the Detroit, Michigan area, and now I live down here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I've been here 15 years, um, been in the business 18 years. 90% um, of my business has always been listing sold, and about 90% of that has either been expired, withdrawn, or for sale by owners. So I've been doing expired since my very, very first year, and I have come to a conclusion that prospecting is a science, and there's a real methodology. Rather, I mean, we can get any new agent to, to bang out 50, 60 phone calls a day, but if you're just winging it and not having a specific strategy and a laser-focused approach, you're going to have a hard time because there's 50 other agents right behind you knocking on the same door. You know that the week it expires, so. What might be appropriate, and I love what you said about an everyday business, because what I do and what I teach my group, the way I teach the science of prospecting is it's a very repeatable exercise. So whether you're in a down market that's shifting downward, downward or a red hot market like Charlotte here still is, or whether I was back in Michigan 15 years ago, it works either way. Because the beauty of this for newer agents, there's always going to be a huge market for expireds, withdrawns, and for sale by owners. Now, I have a polite uh, debate with a lot of my colleagues, and they'll say, John, I don't like cold calling. Well, well let's, let's clarify something right up front here. Expireds, withdrawns, and for sale by owners are not cold calling. In my humble opinion, those are warm leads. They've already got their hand up. 
because they've already recently tried to sell. They're saying, hey, Robert, hey, Mark, hey, Gus, come get me. I just tried and it just didn't connect for whatever reason. So a lot of them blame it on the last agent, but whatever. We can we can work right through that. OK, so I think they're warm calls and why most agents don't like prospecting is they've never really been taught how to do it. There's an exact science to this. You know, whether you call and they answer or you call and leave a voicemail. I mean, I've got voicemail down to a science on how to get people curious enough to want to call me back and hear what I have to say. And these are very uh, brief, very simple, easy to learn conversations. So having said that, here's what's basically going on here. So we're an agent and we want to start prospecting expired listings. So the first thing we want to do is, and this goes without saying, we want to find sellers that still want to sell that have not yet committed to another agent. Now, with that in mind, there's three things going on here. Number one, how do you get through to them? Because there's dozens and dozens of other realtors chasing these expireds day and night. So how do you get through? Once you get through, how do you actually secure the listing appointment? Okay. Then once you get there, you finally got the appointment. Now you're there. You're live. Now it's game on. Okay. How do you secure the listing? So of those three, how do you get through? How do you secure the appointment? How do you get the listing? As you and I have talked several times already, Gus, the hardest one is number one. Yeah. Because, and, and let me, yeah. Let me, let me jump in there, John. I want to tell folks, right? Those are the three. I mean, I love the way you framed that, John. Those are the three problems you have to solve, right? Right. And, 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 the, and you're right. The first one is the one that gets everybody stuck, right? Yeah. If I get a nickel for everyone that told me, you know, oh, my biggest issue with expired is the listing presentation, I would have about two nickels, John. Everybody else is getting stuck on. They're not even talking to them. They're not even yeah. getting in front of them to present. Most right. agents, that's where that's the biggest problem they have to solve. And, and I see them a little more concerned about other things. No, no. Number one, how many expired did you talk to today? How many yep. did you have a conversation with? Because right. everything comes after that. You're right. Yep. Exactly right, Gus. So here's what happens. You got to get really good fairly quick on the phone to, to have a, a running start here. Now, before I go any further, here's one thing that a lot of agents miss. So newer agents that have never done this before really don't have a specific strategy. They're going to try one, maybe two times. And if they're not having any luck, they may just give up. Again, they've never learned, never been taught the proper way on how to use the telephone. It's no more complicated than that. So here's what happens. A listing expires, say, last night at midnight. By lunchtime today over here in Charlotte, that homeowner is going to have close to 100 phone calls. Mm -hmm. I'm not, and maybe even more. And another 100 tomorrow and another 100 the next day. So the quick question is, how in the world do we as agents navigate through all those phone calls? Because the seller had no idea they were going to get hit with a tsunami of all these phone calls. Now that's where what I teach how to leave very clever voicemails, curious enough to get these sellers to want to call me back. I've got about a 20 to 30% callback rate, which is a huge number in a market like this because they're already tired of realtors. The mentality of an expired is this, they're already frustrated. They just spent four, five, six months um, being told this is the hottest market ever and they can't sell their house. So they're all, by the time I get to them, they're already frustrated. So we got to be a coach. We got to be a life coach. We got to be a counselor. Okay, I feel your pain, but here comes the good news now, okay? So having said that, how do you get through with, you know, we got 25,000 agents here and we have 350 people a day moving into Charlotte with nothing for sale. It's a gigantic bottleneck, like a lot of metro areas still are in. So there's another thought to maybe let the first wave go by. Wait a week. Wait two weeks. Then they're answering the phone again. Um, I just did a study in my office with my assistant. We went back five, six months. 
I think out of my, at that time, my latest 16 new listings, 15 of them were from leads that were 90 days old or older. So old, here's a point. Old yes. expired. Old expires. Never throw out a lead for your new agents until you hear a definite no. Never throw out a lead because people change their mind. You, you might be able to get a home and say, oh, no, we're not moving for two years. We got to wait for the kids to graduate from college. Well, in six months, that may change. In a year, that may change. So never get rid of an old lead until you get a definite no and, and then do what you got to do. So what I think is missed here is, and I'm going to get into voicemails here because I know you like that first, Gus, and how to get them to call you back. Yeah, so this is the value bomb, incoming, incoming. Everybody be, be ready. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to give them a couple of gold nuggets here that they can run with like this afternoon and start calling. So you have to have an approach, okay? You have to have an approach. You just can't call wildly dozens and dozens of calls each day, hope somebody answers or hope somebody calls you back. Uh-oh, what do you, he answered. Now what do I do? You know what I mean? You've got you've got a finite amount of seconds. These are not 20 or 30 minute calls. So they're already frustrated. They're already, some are actually downright angry why my house hasn't sold. So you're going to get the brunt of that at hello. No, oh gosh, another realtor. They're already tired of us. So you better be on your game right at hello. You only get one chance. You don't get four. And you have to have an immediate conversation that's clever enough and curious enough to that home seller or that conversation is going to end real quick. Okay. Then what you're trying to do then is substantiate your way to getting a listing appointment while 50 other agents in front of you and behind you are trying for the exact same thing. We'll get into the listing presentation here in a minute, but there's a real science as to not only how to get them on the phone, and then once you get them, how do you secure the listing appointment? So why don't we talk about voicemails? So a home expires, am I going too fast? Are we good? No, we're good. Keep it. Okay. This is why we're here. So, okay, so a home expires, and then here comes the tsunami of realtor calls the very first day. Now, their voicemails are going to overfill, and then they, you know they delete them all, and then they're going to overfill again, and then the phone's going to ring till ten o'clock at night, the first every day for the first week. So, what the seller is basically going to hear are things of the nature of. You know, hi, this is Bob. I'm with Realty Company 123. I see your home just expired. Well, I'm the number one agent in your area. I'm with the number one team. You need to call me back immediately. I'm the only one that can get your home relisted and sold for top dollar. Da, 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 da. Okay. And then here comes the next one. Hi, this is Mary. I'm with Realty Company ABC, and I'm the number one agent in your market. And I noticed that your home expired. Well, you need to call me as soon as possible. I can get you sold on and on and on. No strategy, no reasoning, no approach. It's all about me, me, me. So after the seller hears that four or five times, they're, they're even more tired of us. So the minute they listen to a voicemail that says realtor, it's usually delete before they get to the end of the first sentence. So let's, let's put this under a microscope here for a minute. These people still want to sell. Now, what do they need to, let's say they want to move to Texas from here in Charlotte. They want to move to Houston, Texas. What do they need to sell their house? A buyer. So why don't I, instead of jumping into that red hot microwave that me, 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 and I've got plaques and I've got awards and I've got trope, they don't care about that. They want to know who's going to help them sell their house today so we can get on our way to Houston. So they need a buyer. Well, let's help them along. Why don't I go something like this? Hi, this is John D. Smith with EXP Realty. I live right here in the Matthews area. I was just curious, are you still accepting offers on your home for sale on Aspen Drive? My cell number is 704-999-0896. Stop right there. Now you see what I just did, Robert? So it's not about me, it's about them. And all I'm asking for is information. I'm not trying to sell them anything yet, okay? Are you still interested in selling? Okay, so are you still accepting offers? 
Now, what that does, I mean, I have tried and practiced hundreds, I mean, hundreds of different voicemail scripts, itty bitty short, sweet ones to long, high tech, real long ones. Then I found out you only get 30 seconds. So that didn't work. Okay. Now, how about let's just get right to the point. Are you still accepting offers? Now, who's not going to call me back is somebody that's already committed to another agent. Maybe they just signed with somebody two days ago and we weren't aware of it. Somebody, a homeowner that's decided they're just not going to sell. They just, you know, a job change didn't go through. The kids are going to stay in school, whatever it is. They just, they're going to stay put. Okay, fine. Um, if their brother-in-law is a realtor, we're not going to get it anyway. So we're looking for those sellers that still have their hand up. Yeah, I want to sell. I want to move to Texas or wherever that have not yet committed to another agent. And there is a ton of them out there. So it's our job to go and find them. That's why we use Red X and all these other great lead source companies. Okay. So what usually happens there's two kinds of callbacks I get because you're wondering out there, what are you going to do now, John, when he calls you back? Yeah, so there, there, got, where's, where's my buyer, John? Where's, uh, where's that offer you were talking about? What, what, how does that yeah. conversation go? Yeah. So I've got that I teach my agents in my group, five or six, ready to go, super short, simple, easy dialogue voicemails to get people to very simply call you back. It's amazingly simple. I just gave you one that is gold. John, can we repeat that one? We had a question in the group. Can we repeat that one one more time? That's really simple voicemail. The, the, oh, that, sure. that one. Um, hi, this is John D. Smith. I'm with EXP Realty right here in the Matthews area. I was just curious. Are you still accepting offers on your home for sale on Aspen Drive? My cell number is 704-999-0896. And stop right there. So think about what I did. I identified myself as a real estate professional. So when they get this voicemail, let's say they just got home and they're eating dinner and they're replaying all these 2000 realtor voicemails. They hear all the other stuff about me, me, me. I'm the greatest. I'm the biggest. I'm the best. And then they get to mine. Now I sounded different, a little bit different. And then they're, I've been told this hundreds of times. Okay. John, you sounded so different. So they hear my voicemail and they say, Wait a minute, that guy said something about offers. Play that back again. And they'll play it a second or a third time. So wait a minute, he said EXP, so we know he's a real estate agent. So what does this guy really want? Does he think he's got a buyer? Is he just chasing the listing? Uh, does he want to buy it himself? Does he think if he gets the listing, he can create an influx of buyers? We better call that guy back. Go get, you know, go get his phone number right now. I win right there. And all I'm doing is getting a pulse. Do you still want to sell? And have you not yet committed to another agent? And notice how I put a little pitch. Are you still accepting offers? Offers. And, you know, I study the, the tonality of it. It's huge. You got a few Absolutely. seconds to leave a voicemail or you're in the delete pool. You're gone for good. Okay. So I do really well with that. And I got four or five other dynamite lead in scripts where we get people to call him back. So when he calls you back, um, you get one or two. So I'll give you an easy one and then I'll give you the hard one. The easy one is, hi, John, this is uh, Linda. I got your voicemail last night. I was just curious. You said something about offers, John. How is that? So thank you, Linda. I appreciate you calling back so quick. I was so surprised. Linda, to see your home expired yesterday, especially a home as nice as yours. Kill them with kindness. Okay. I just couldn't help but be curious, Linda. Did you just decide you don't want to sell anymore? Or are you still interested, you know, in selling? Oh no, John, we've got to move to Tampa, Florida. My husband's job starts in 60 days. We've got to get down there. We're just disappointed. We were told the market was so hot and we're still here. All right, great. Well, listen, it sounds like you know, you're still interested in selling, would you be willing to look at a much more aggressive, possibly more effective way of marketing your home this next time around? I specialize in this for 18 years, and I've got a very robust marketing approach. I'd love to show you how I market homes. Let's assume you had a great agent last time, but for whatever reason, it just didn't connect for them. You know, always be complimentary of your predecessor. You don't gain a thing going the other way, okay? 
Always take the high road. So if you just burn four, five, six months and the house is still there, they can't sell it. I mean, wouldn't they be curious as all get out if I've been doing this 18 years, at least what I have to say. So it's as simple as, hey, Linda, I live 10 minutes from you. I know your neighborhood. I've sold in your neighborhood before. If you have a few minutes one day in the next few days, I'd love to stop by, take a quick look at your house. No obligation. And maybe I can offer a couple of subtle suggestions. And while I'm there, I can show you how I actually aggressively market listings. And if you like what you see in here, maybe we can continue on. If not, we'll stop right there. You don't owe me anything. So that one's as easy as it comes. Now let's go to the tough one. Here comes Bob. Now Bob thinks I got an offer. So on my voicemail, I say, are you still accepting offers? You got to say it the right way. It's how you deliver it. Remember, it's how you say it. Are you still accepting offers? So Bob's going to call me back next morning. John, this is Bob. I got your message. Do you have an offer on my house or not? Boom, right between the eyes. And you can feel the red in his face. He's mad at the world because his, his listing expired. So Bob, thanks so much for calling me back. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So do you have an offer on my house, John, or not? Uh, no, Bob, I actually don't have an offer on your house at the moment. Oh, geez, I thought you had an offer. You said something about offers on my voicemail. So I said, Bob, I was asking, are you still accepting offers? So he's almost like, why are you even bothering me? Because he totally misunderstood. So Bob, let me explain to you. This is how the market's working right now. I was so surprised, Bob, to see that your home expired, especially a home as nice as yours, Bob, kill them with kindness. I just wanted to see, are you just, you just change your mind? You don't want to sell anymore? Because I've run out of listings already four times here in Charlotte. It's never happened to me before. I can't keep them on the shelf. And to see a really nice home like yours expire altogether, I just didn't know if you decided not to sell anymore. So you walk them down that sidewalk, right, Gus? So, Bob, here's the way the market is right now. So today's Wednesday. I could list a home today, this afternoon, go active. Here comes all the showings. The phone's ringing off the wall with agents trying to line up a showing to see your house. And that evening, I get a call from, say, a couple in Atlanta, Georgia. And they say, John, we're moving to Charlotte, and we just saw your new listing go up today. And that looks like something we'd be very interested in. Well, we're coming to Charlotte this weekend to look for a home. Would you be willing to show us your new listing Saturday morning at 9 o'clock? Absolutely. Take down your info. Thanks for the call. See you Saturday. Bob, okay, you're still on with Bob here. There's a really good chance, Bob, that home is probably going to sell before Friday night, before they even get to town. So they're aware of that, and we're aware of that. There's nothing really we can do. So it just surprised me, Bob, that your home expired because I reviewed your listing two or three times, and I was just puzzled. So, Bob, let me ask you something. Are you still interested in selling? Oh yeah, I've got to move to you know wherever. I have a new job waiting. All right, would you be willing to look at a much more aggressive, possibly more effective way of marketing your home this next time around? And just say, Bob, you obviously have a great home in a great neighborhood. I live not too far away, okay? But if you expired, the simple fact is the right buyers weren't seeing your home. So you got to change the recipe. So if you'd give me a chance to stop by, I'd be glad to talk to you for a few minutes, take a quick look at your house. I'll show you how I professionally market a home. And if you like what you see in here, we can continue on. If, if not, then we'll stop right there. You don't owe me a thing. Now, let me pause right now for the listening audience. What you're going to get a time or two is, well, John, you sound pretty good, but I've already talked to eight other realtors this morning. And after a while, you guys all sound the same. So here's where the rubber hits the road, right here. So John, I've heard about MLS, I've heard about websites, I've heard about flyer boxes, I've heard about billboards, I've heard about aero signs. You guys all sound the same. So now when you gotta reach into your magic bag of tricks and say, I got something here that the other guys may not have. So you get some input from them and say, hey Bob, you seem like a really sharp man. Why do you think your house didn't sell? Well, I don't know. We have it priced right. We've been told it's staged impeccably. The yard's in great shape. We can't figure it out, John. Okay, well then I think the obvious 
conclusion is the right type of buyers never saw your home the first time around. So there's a disconnect in there somewhere. Well, I got a way around all that. We do MLS, websites, flyer boxes, print media, till we're blue in the face. We hit every ancillary site the minute it goes active. I happen to use another tool, and the new agents out here, Gus can pick this up tomorrow, um, you know, very easily. Then I'm gonna bring in something like a voice activated call capturing system. So I'm gonna put on all my ancillary sites, a feature sheet, that's going to highlight the home. Let's just say this is a picture of a home. Okay. And I'm going to use a 1-800 number. It can be done very, very inexpensively where they can call seven, 24 hours a day, hear a recorded message about the home. As they're listening, regardless of where they are, it rings and voice activates right onto my cell on the same call. So that's one little tool I have that, okay, John, you sound all the same. What do you have extra to warn me giving you an appointment? There's a great one right there. So a lot of times it can be as simple as the pictures are a mess or the messaging was way off. They're forgetting critical points of interest because who are we kidding? A listing is so hard to get right now, regardless of where you are. And a new agent is so excited. He can't wait to get back to his office, get it typed in, get it loaded in, and hit that active button. He never thought to proof it. Oh, by the way, you back up to a brand new middle school. You got a brand new ball diamond right down the street. You're close to whatever mall, you know, easy access to 485. They forgot all that. And then the listing sits there for six months, ill-equipped. Go ahead, Gus. Yeah, definitely. So so for a, a few more questions that come into the group, folks asking us to repeat certain parts of the script. So folks, uh, this is all going to be recorded. Don't worry about that. You can always go back and watch it. And at the end of the presentation, we'll give out John's contact information. So you've got like a specific question. Hey, John, how do I tweak the script this way? You can actually ask John directly. John has been gracious enough uh, to offer to do that for some of you folks. So um, don't worry about it. If you didn't get every single word of the script, you didn't write it down, don't put the pen down. Like, you know, get the crafts out of your out of your, your hand, right? Don't worry about it. Uh, it's going to be recorded on YouTube, Lab Code Agent's YouTube channel. Usually goes live within a couple of days after this. So don't worry about that. Focus on the content. Focus on if this is resonating with you. The script itself, you'll get that. Don't worry about it. You can watch it again and get it word for word if you want, or you'll be able to reach out to John at the end of the call if you want to continue the conversation, have a specific question. But but keep going, John. Keep going. I think you have a great one. A couple of things I'd like to add. You've got to focus. I love the way you, you, you laid that out. You've got to focus on what sets you apart from other agents in the marketplace. Like You mentioned, hey, that voice capture system is awesome. Great. What if you have a database of buyers? Right? Hey, I've got... 500 buyers in my database. I'd love to market this property to aggressively. Hey, I've got an ISA making a thousand calls a day uh, trying to find buyers for my listings. Hey, I've got this much in Facebook ads, Google ads. I mean, whatever it happens to be, folks, fill in that blank, right? What is going to set you apart from everyone else in the marketplace if the, if the seller asks you that? You got to be able to answer the objection like on the fly, I feel you probably should, you should tear up your real estate agent card uh, if you cannot answer what sets you apart from everybody else in the marketplace. You gotta have that ready to go. Keep going, John, keep going. Okay, good stuff, Gus. So the next thing is, so when I talk to him for just a couple, three, four short minutes, I'm usually able to get the listing appointment, a little bit of give and take, then it becomes just basically easy problem solving. So then, you're at the front door. You got the appointment. So as you and I have talked several times, now is where the real rubber meets the road. How am I going to get that listing? And that's where, I mean, we could go all day here. You solve two problems now though, right? You've made, right. I mean, if you are getting to this point, guys, yeah. you are 50% of the way there, right? If you right. talk to, so number one, are you talking to these expired listings, right? Talking to them, right. leaving really effective voicemail, calling them, right? Talk to them. Number two, be able to talk to them and tell them, and I love John's script. One, John, it's a very ethical script. You're, 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 you're saying things on the up and up, you're taking the high road. People notice that, people respect yeah. that, right? And, and it's a really, really effective way to talk to them. And then get in front, get the appointment, get in front of them, because then the, the third problem comes up, right? First problem, talking to them. Second problem, getting in front of them. Third problem, well, now you're in front of them. Now it's showtime. How do you, how do you approach that problem, John? Okay, thank you, Gus. So 
this is where I try to prepare like no other. To me, my listing presentation is anything and everything. I prepare and I prepare and I prepare. So let's start with comps. Everybody always asks me about comps. I present comps differently than 90% of every other agent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take in a given subdivision, neighborhood, whatever you want to call it, the latest four, five, six relative close comps to the subject home. I'm going to take every comp and print it out. And I'm going to study verbatim, you know, just the sheer basics, you know, beds, baths, year built, square footage, lot size, close to this, close to that, brick, siding, whatever it is. Okay. I'm going to write significant notes on every single comp that's relative to that home. And like around here, everybody just prints out that one line item sheet with all the actives under contracts and solds, and they just kind of hand it to the seller. No, no, I do a much deeper dive where I closely study every comp that's relative to that home. I put very specific notes on every one, and I lay those out in front of the seller. And basically, you know, this one's got one more bedroom. This one's got one more bathroom. This one's got a swimming pool built in. This one's got a much bigger lot. This one's five years, whatever it is. And the way you lay that out makes it almost look like you've been in every home in the neighborhood. And you're not going to say you have, but you're showing the seller, I have researched your neighborhood better, you know, more definitively than anybody else. Here's what you're up against now. And not just the solds. Yeah, the solds are what the appraiser is going to look at, but the under contracts and the actives, because here's what you're currently competing against today. So I do a really deep dive just as to how I present the comps. That's just for openers. Then my portfolio is my pride and joy. So for agents that have been around a little while, it's show, say, do. Show what you've done, say what you're going to do, then just go ahead and do it. For your newbies, Gus and I are going to do a whole session on what new agents that are, let's say, less than six months into the business can bring, because they don't have a track record yet. We've all been there. What can a brand new agent bring on a listing appointment to an expired and try to hold a candle with a guy that's been in as long as me. And there is a science to that. And there is a very viable solution because I was one of them. All the gray hair I got in my head, I learned the hard way. Okay. So go ahead, yeah. Gus. And, and John, I mean, tell us about, you know, one of the agents in your org. I mean, you're coaching someone that literally, so we, we had a question in the chat that said, hey, well, what if I don't have 18 years experience yeah. in, in experience your business? Tell us about one of the agents you're coaching uh, I, I mean, this is just a crazy story, guys, because I think we come up with so many limiting beliefs about, mm -hmm. oh, I'm too new in the business. Oh, I'm, you know, I don't have time to make those calls. Oh, I, you know, it's just, it's just, those are too hard. I mean, tell us about that story uh, from your, yeah. from your uh, agent you're mentoring out of, out of Charleston. I think that's mind-blowing. Yeah. Okay, so I have a new agent. She's been with me about uh, maybe five weeks now. In her first month, she comes from the world of IT and high technology, never been in sales. So she said, John, I can do this tech stuff all day long. I'm, I'm good on websites, but John, I am terrified of phone calling because I've never done it before. I said, all right, well, let's just slow it down. I'm going to show you how I do it. And really all you have to do is just kind of mirror me, just mimic me for a few days and see what happens. So out I come with a stack of expireds a stack of withdrawns and a stack of for sale by owners. She just closely watched and we made some role playing live calls. Okay. So this is how I do an expired. This is how I do a, a withdrawn and, and on down the line. And I gave her two or three really easy voicemail scripts. So we met for a couple hours, just kind of showing her how I do it. Two days later, she calls me, she's in Charleston and I'm over here in Charlotte, about three hours away. John, I got a for sale by owner appointment and it was brutal to get. She told me that this seller was very difficult. She got a for sale by owner on her own. Um, the very next week, she got an expired on her own, simply using these scripts that I teach in to my group each and every day. Then the third week, nothing. The fourth week, she got another expired listing appointment. By the time she went to the third one, get this, the first one already sold. It already was under contract. She got the listing. So she, she got, not just got the appointment. She got the listing for that business. 
Yeah, and it went active that first weekend. The first one had already sold by the time she got to the third one. So now she's on fire. So she gets home from work at six o'clock every night, okay? And, you know, family commitments, whatever. She can't even start calling until 6.30 in the evening. So she's got about a one hour, one and a half hour window that, hey, I got to make this time count or, you know, it's going to be too late and then I lose in another whole day. She called me so excited the second week. She said, John, I'm great at this. You won't believe it. Every time she gets it, she calls me almost every night now. And I, I have a ball just listening to her. She's so excited. She says, I am great at this. I thought I was going to be terrified, but these are easy, simple conversations. So just keep it simple. Resonates. Now, we're at the appointment. Let's go back. Okay, Gus? 100%. You got, you got to have a portfolio. You got to have a listing presentation. You got to be able to show some cool stuff, even you newbies, that I can show and teach and explain to you how to do this when you're brand new, that you can hold a really good account of yourself. Now, I didn't build my portfolio overnight. It's taken me years. But when I was brand new, I didn't have anything. I mean, I would literally walk in with just my business card and a, and a legal pad and hope to have a productive conversation. And I was getting listings in. One of the things you can say to the newbies out there, hey, Mr. Seller, I know you're talking to tons of realtors here, but guess what? I know I'm new and I don't have as big a batting average as, as a guy like John here, but you're catching me at a great time. You know why? A year from now, I'm probably going to have 15, 20 listings and I'm going to be so busy. Okay. I won't be able to see straight because I'm very ambitious. So right now you can look at me as your own private real estate professional. I can dedicate that much more time to just marketing of your house. Okay. Um, so far, so good, Gus? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay. You know, we've got, we've so, got a few left, John. I want to focus the, the final part of this, of the presentation on, on one question, right? One right. question, because I think it's going to bring it all together. Typically, in my experience, the expired listing did not sell because of, you know, it takes three things to sell a home. Location, oh, yeah. condition, price, right? You right. can't do anything about the location. Let's take that one out of the, out of the equation for now. But, but usually the condition of the home is not where it needs to be, or the price of the home is not yep. where it needs to be, or a combination of both. Right. How do you position your, yourself, the conversation, the listening appointment, to sit down at the kitchen table and talk about one or two or both of those items and yep. get expired seller to agree to get that home sold? What do you do? Yeah, that's it, Gus. That's it. So... As I say, the big three, price, location, condition. We can't control location, like you say. So the first thing I do when I get there, I don't bring up price to last. Unless they bring it up ahead of time, and then I'll go ahead and address it. I want to see the house. I want to walk around the house. I want exactly what you said. I want to see the condition of the home inside and out. I'm a huge believer in first impression. I mean, if the house is a mess, if it needs tons of work, and it's not well-maintained, that's telling the, that's sending the buyers a message right there. Okay, this is going to need a lot of work. If the yard's not well taken care of and well manicured, that could be problematic. So I want to see the house first. Let's discuss the condition. Some don't need anything. It's standing tall. Some look like a frat party took place there last night. And I mean, you know, the, the sky's the limit as to what they need. So what I'm going to do, once we assess the condition of the home, and we'll talk about the yard and we'll talk about the location, pluses and minuses. Then I go into my comps presentation and what I'm going to do, I call it breadcrumbs. The way I present those comps in a very systematic way, I'm leading them right to their own conclusion about the price. And you can say something like this. Let's say it was on for six months and it expired. So everything in the house looks good. Everything in the yard looks good, and they can't figure out why. And you can kind of see, all right, it's close, but they're a little high. And they didn't, it just sat for six whole months. So you can lead them to what I call the promised land, say, okay, listen, we've already learned what price didn't work. To my humble opinion, you've got everything else clicking here. The location's good. You got a nice yard, okay? Um, the condition, the location. Now let's talk about the price. If the first two are good, sometimes just a slight little wiggle because you got a whole new batch of buyers now that didn't see you the last time around. 
The other ones are gone and they've usually probably already bought something or pulled out. So sometimes I lead them right to the price and then they'll say, oh, you know what? I can see we're a little high. We need to drop at five or 10,000 or whatever it is. They'll beat you to that issue. So my whole thing is come in so well prepared. Think of what they can ask you that you haven't even thought of yet. So you want to have a very substantial portfolio and lean on your whatever firm you're with. Talk about some of your local firm successes. You can name anybody you want. Okay. These are the kind of homes we're used to dealing with at, you know, realty firm one, two, three. Brag about your company. Brag about the size of your office. But I'm hungrier. You know, put me in, coach. You could look at me as your own professional realtor. But tying in those three, Gus, price, location, condition is critical. And like I was telling you, I'll talk in a second if you want about that video I did. I got three listings the weekend that the in interest rates went up three quarters of a full point. That, definitely, because I think that's on people's minds right now. There's a lot of yeah. anxiety with buyers and sellers about the interest rates. Has the market peaked? What, what, yeah. tell, tell us about what you did to yeah. really get people to jump out and go, hey, John, you know, I need to talk to you. Tell us about that voice now. Yeah, I did a little two-minute video. Text message, yeah. Yeah, I did a little video about two minutes in length, just to my sphere, and I sent it out to maybe 12 or 15 of my immediate seller prospects who I continuously been in touch with, right? And I started out by saying, okay, folks, I get asked about every day, John, what do you think of the market? What do you think is going to happen? Is it going to crash? Is it going to stay similar? These interest rates? My simple conclusion is this. Okay, I hear the interest rates. I see the rates going up, and they're going up pretty aggressively. But you know what my take is? We're getting back to normal. Normal. So think about it. We were spoiled rotten at 2%, 25 3%. Those days are probably gone for good. We're never going to see 2% again. Banks can't make any money at 2%. So we're getting back to normal. Five and a half, six, even a little over 6%. That's normal, okay? For any of us that got gray hair on our head, when we bought our first home, it was nine and three quarter. And then it went to 11 and a half. And we thought that was a great deal. So six-ish is getting back to normal. Now, let me bring a little more clarity here for the newer agents. This is all you got to say. And then I'll show you how I got these three listings that came out of nowhere. It's all relative. So if I was going to sell my home three, four months ago, I, I could have got a little, you know, a little higher price and say right now, the market softened a little bit. So you sell for a little bit less, but I'm probably then going to turn right around and buy the next home for a little bit less. So watch this. If you sell for top, top dollar, you're probably going to have to turn right around and buy the next one at top, top dollar. If I sold this one for less, I'm going to buy the next one for probably an equivalent, you know, any way you want to crunch the numbers. It's all relative. So what I tell my group, tell your clients this, if all the dominoes are lined up for you to move, you know, the kids are getting ready to graduate, we want to downsize, mom and dad are going to, whatever it is, and all the personal dominoes are lined up for us to move, just go ahead and move. Don't let interest rates be the one and only deterrent. Do your homework on the selling end, get a good aggressive agent, and do your homework on the buying agent, and go ahead and move. You, if you leave the interest rates as the one and only determining factor to move or not, we miss the whole point. Your budget is way too tight to begin. And you know how society, everybody overspends. You know, they're qualified to 400, so they spend 395. They're qualified to 300, they spend 299.9. You know what I mean? You get me. So it's all relative. Just relax. You know what I mean? Um, I, it's I all that. relative. And you recorded that video and put it in the text message. You're going to blast it, your top prospects, your sphere. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like a public service announcement, quite frankly, right? I love that. Yeah. So, yeah. so here's what happened. I got three phone calls by dinner time that night. This was a Friday. One from a lady that I've been talking to for a year that I thought was another year away. She had to get a lot of work done on the house, new roof, garage door, the whole bit. She says, John. How soon can you get out here? And I'm like, why? What's the matter? She says, I don't want to miss this window. So says, 
that the heck with the garage door. I want to get this thing listed before we have a, a substantial drop off, even though we're still here in North Carolina. Okay. That's one that sign that one the following Monday morning. The second one is a townhome owner that called me up and he says, John, I got two ways to go. I can rent this over here in Concord for top dollar. He can rent it for an obscene amount of money. But at the same time, I think if I cash out now, I'll never see this seller's market ever again. So he said, can you meet me tomorrow at 3.30? So we listed it on the spot. Okay. The third one was coming as a for sale by owner. So that's another day old on how I approach for sale by owners. And he said, John, I've already met with six realtors. Can you be here at eight in the morning? Because I want to make a decision by lunchtime tomorrow. So there I am at eight in the morning. I went through my whole thing. And, you know, for sale by owners want realtors to do what? Cut their commission. So he interviewed six before me. I was the last one and I had to beg for an appointment. Just, you know, let me in coach, let me in coach. I got that listing and I walked away with the listing and I was the highest price commission. So the go. whole point is those people did not want to miss that window. So that Friday, I didn't know any of the three of them were that viable. So the bigger point here is you got to reassess your current prospect list, you know, your current pipeline, because they're going to change now. When the mark, what a market shift does, it just changes people timing. Most of them still want to sell. Oh no, we better wait a year now because now the kids are going to stay in another semester in school. Or the ones that are a year out say, no, wait a minute, I better jump in now and get to Florida while they're getting still good. So the ones that you think are on your current pipeline, they may be gone in six months. But the ones that you thought were way out in left field, they're front and center now. So you got to reposition your prospect and your current pipeline because it's going to change. That's going to shift now, too. So um, that's how I got all three. One. Um, One's under contract, one's got offers that should go under contract in the next day or two, and the third one's active. But I didn't know of any of those three that previous few days. Yeah, I, I, I love that because that's just being, uh, you're being a resource, right? So we're coming up on the end of the, uh, of the webinar today, John. I really want to thank you. We got a lot of questions. No people want to talk to you. People want to be coached by you. So guys, <laughs> I want to I, I brag a little bit, humble brag here. I basically forced John to, to <laughs> a, a coaching program. He's never been a coach. He, he, he coaches folks in this aging group, but he's never been a coach like for, for hire anyone. I have hired him to coach my clients at Power ISA. Every week, we're talking about expired mastery, physical mastery, how to maximize tools like Red X, how to get the most out of your ISA, how to do all, all things prospect. He's helping us. Uh, John, if people want to continue the conversation, um, if they want to hire you to consult with them, how do they take their expired and physical game to the next level? What is the best way to reach out to you? Absolutely, Gus. Thank you for that. Um, my direct cell number is area code 704-999-0896. Once again, that's 704-999-0896. And like you said, in just a few short weeks, I've actually introduced uh, a, a very successful coaching program here. We've got a lot of people already involved in this and it's already really grain, gaining traction with some really positive results over most of what we just discussed here in the last hour. So happy to talk to anybody. Feel free to give me a call, a question, a comment. Would love to get any input on this call. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not hard to find as Gus will tell you. So thanks to Gus. Yeah. And what's going to happen now is a lot of these coaching clients are going to end up back with Gus Oh, I got to give Power ISA a plug. <laughs> My new ISA, thanks to Gus, because I, I never had an ISA until about two months ago. I have my first two closed. They're in the bank. Okay. I have 14 or 15 brand new serious seller prospects for the next three to six months because we took the time, Gus and I, to take yeah. the ISA, ISA aside and train her on how to use these scripts and make it a very repeatable business. So whether I'm in Michigan or down here in North Carolina, it works and we're having a ball with it. And now she's got all kinds of confidence like the lady in Charleston. She can't wait to get to the phone every morning. So 
it's amazing what a little bit of practice and a little bit of strategy, you build confidence, then you're on fire. So all we need is this thing, guys, believe it or not. And the reason a lot of agents don't like prospecting is they've never really been taught. So, I mean, I'm at a point when I'm ready to do some, pro I can't wait to get to the phone to find out who, who's on the other end. So that could be a future prospect for Gus, because when I get done with them, they're going to be ready for Gus's ISAs, and we exactly. all win. And I want, I want a public service announcement for everybody. ISA shouldn't be the first person you hire, right? You, an ISA is going to kill it for you. If you have a system, you've got Red X, you're making your calls, you've got an administrative assistant, which is all the things that John already had, plugging an ISA into a successful system that is what's going to really drive your business forward. Do, hiring an ISA because you don't want to make calls is not a winning proposition, folks. So listen to John. Do what he, That's what we hired John. You know, Mike, this guy is like a walking poster of how you should do it, how you can be successful, <laughs> add leverage, add technology to a proven system, and you're really going to blow it up. So thank you so much, John. For folks, at, we got a, a lot of more questions jumping in. Folks, we're out of time. We've got John's personal number in the chat below. So check it out. He already said it. For folks watching this on the replay, rewind it a, a minute or two. John said his personal cell phone number. If you want to sync up with him, uh, thank you so much for Robert and the team at Red X for having us here. Thank you, LCA. And thanks, everybody, for attending today. Appreciate you guys. Thank, thank you so you. much. Good to see you guys. Take care.